Love, brothers and sisters in Christ, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Dear Lord, this day on the Feast of St. Andrew, we ask that you shall fill us not merely with temporal possessions, but with your Spirit. And St. Andrew, we ask that you shall bring us closer to our Lord by his, by the nets of salvation, so to speak. In other words, we hope you shall fulfill your promise of being a fisher of men. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just uh, listened to Marcus Gordai's, um, uh The Journey Home program, and today he was talking with a, a former Protestant, a former Bible believer, and this guy, um, <clears throat> he, he made an interesting point that I'd like to carry over to you guys. It, uh, perhaps it might help people understand why we pray to the saints and Mary. Uh, by which, of course, we mean we don't worship them. We ask them for their help. And, of course, you know, we can also, <clears throat> quote-unquote, pray to living people, too. We can ask them for their help. We can ask them to pray to God for us. And we can also ask them to pray for the saints to us. Now, getting over a couple of the other hurdles about the saints that um, I've talked about in previous videos. Another question a Protestant might ask is, um, how are the prayers of, say, Mary more effective than the prayers of myself? And this this former Protestant, this, this songwriter, gave a very good uh, understanding of it. See, when us when us living people down here on earth pray to God, we have a lot of our own problems, you know. We are sinful, imperfect creatures who have not yet experienced the glory of God. Therefore, we're filled with our own worries, our own strife, our own jealousy, our own gluttonies, our own, our own problems. We'll put it that way. <coughs> and so, therefore, we can't completely and fully ask out of love for the prayers um, that we would like to ask for. We can try, but until we reach heaven, we will never fully succeed. The saints, on the other hand, and most especially Mary, um, since they have been glorified in God, since they are closer to God and more like him than they have ever been, since they no longer have to worry about the strife of sin and temptation, since they are in pure love and like pure love, <clears throat> their prayers are nothing but pure love. In other words, their prayers are more powerful because they are more pure than our own. Ours are mixed in with our own problems. But uh, the prayers of the saints are nothing but focused on the will of God. They are nothing but focused on the intention, the true intention of the prayer. And I say Mary especially because she was the first, she was the only one not to fall into original sin even because the Lord saved her from that, even. And her intentions are so pure and so powerful that she will effectively ask for Christ's help far more effectively than anyone else, because her life is completely about Jesus. And while all of us should want our lives to be about Jesus, and while all of us strive to have our lives be about Jesus, None of us, not one, can fulfill it so well as Mary did, because we all have problems with sin and temptation. She never did, though, because God saved her from that from even before conception. <clears throat> but you see, 
That is a very good reason to pray to the saints, because even the lowest saint in heaven is closer to God than even the most holy person down here. Another way to look at it is that, um, well, we offer up ourselves to God, right? We give what little we have, but the difference is between presenting it from our dirty, sinful hands that have not yet been glorified in Christ, and presenting our meager offerings on the golden platter that is the glorified, uh, holy body of Christ that is victorious and in heaven. <clears throat> it's it's uh, presenting our prayers to God uh, by ourselves versus by the saints is the difference between offering something from muddy hands and offering something on a golden platter. The saints in heaven are refined. They don't need to worry about the strife of sin or of temptation, and they their problems are solved. They are solved in Christ already. Ours are not. While we pray for other people, we are also praying for ourselves, that our prayers may be effective, because we cannot be quite sure that they are. In one of the books of wisdom, in the Old Testament, I think, it says something along the lines of, the prayers of a righteous man are powerful with God. And who could possibly be more righteous than the saints, who have won the race, and have fought the good fight, and are in heaven with our Lord? That's all the saying. That's all the canonical saints are. I mean, we are saints down here on earth, too. But the canonical saints, like the ones whom we uh, acknowledge in the masses, um, these are people who have proven that they are powerful with God, and they are righteous, and that they have won the race. <clears throat> I'm not saying we should stop praying for each other or anything like that. Certainly not. We should continually pray for each other. I pray every night for all young Catholic women that our Lord may protect them. But I also know <clears throat> that the prayer of the saints is more powerful than any prayer I could possibly give. And this analogy has been very helpful towards understanding that. And I hope it has helped you understand perhaps a bit more why we Ask for the prayers of the saints. Genghis Khan 44 out. God bless you. And may the smiles of the martyrs greet you. Should you make it to heaven this day. Happy Advent.